Welcome back. I'm Aida Awad from Broad College. Today's video is about metamorphism and metamorphic rocks. The learning targets for this video are recognize and illustrate the place of metamorphic rocks in the rock cycle, categorize metamorphic rock types based on their origin, composition, and texture, and analyze metamorphic rocks for clues to their history. So let's dive right in here with some uh, definitions. Metamorphism, the word itself means to change form. And metamorphism actually occurs because of changes in the temperature, so application of heat, pressure, or chemically active fluids. There are three different primary settings under which metamorphism occurs. And they are contact metamorphism, regional metamorphism, and hydrothermal metamorphism. When we look at metamorphic rocks, they fall into two primary categories, foliated and non-foliated. And we can talk about metamorphism in terms of the metamorphic grade. We get information for metamorphic grade from the index minerals present, and they also suggest some things about the metamorphic environment. So let's talk about contact metamorphism first. Contact metamorphism occurs when magma is intruded into some country rock and it actually bakes that country rock. So it heats it up adjacent to where that magma is being intruded. The area that's baked is known as the baked zone or the metamorphic aureole. And within that metamorphic aureole, we see that the metamorphic grade decreases with distance from that magma chamber. So the farther you get from the magma chamber, the lower the metamorphic grade. And some common parent and daughter metamorphic rock types that we see here, uh, the first rock will be a sedimentary rock, so limestone. And in contact metamorphism, limestone is typically metamorphosed into marble. Quartz sandstone is typically metamorphosed into the metamorphic rock quartzite. And shales, sedimentary shale, is typically metamorphosed into something like hornfels. So in the picture on the right here, you can see at the bottom an example of an igneous pluton, the lighter color rock material, that is intruded into that country rock, the darker color material, and that band of metamorphic aureole or baked zone in the rock. Moving on to regional metamorphism. Now regional metamorphism produces the largest volume of metamorphic rock. And that's because of its association with plate boundaries, uh, specifically convergent plate boundaries and mountain building or orogenies. And this occurs because of differential stresses that build up from a convergent plate boundary, where you have plates moving toward one another. And this often causes foliation to occur in the metamorphic rocks that result. So when we see foliated metamorphic rocks, the first thing we're going to look at we're going to look at regional metamorphism and those processes. Hydrothermal metamorphism occurs when there's water, hot water, being driven from the local country rock and it migrates, it causes the migration of ions within that rock and that supports recrystallization of the existing minerals. Hydrothermal solutions flow through fractured rock, allowing those new minerals to precipitate. This is very common along mid-ocean ridge systems where there's a lot of fracturing in the rock as it moves away from that spreading center and cold ocean water that flows down into those fractures or cracks and is heated up by that nearby uh, intrusion of magma at the mid-ocean ridge. It's also important to note that some very economically important metal deposits result from hydrothermal metamorphism that occurs uh, near plate boundaries, specifically divergent plate boundaries. So in the top picture here, you can see what's known as a white smoker, and that is an underwater hydrothermal system where there is actually uh, steam being emitted from those cracks on the ocean floor, and they build up into chimneys, um, and they put out that colored uh, emission, either white or black, depending on what minerals are present in that smoke. Moving on now to talk about how metamorphic rocks become foliated. If you think about a typical, let's say, granite as shown here on the right side in the middle picture, 
all of the crystals are oriented in a random fashion. If you apply stress from two sides, so differential stress, those mineral crystals are going to all line up so that they are parallel to one another and their long axis is perpendicular to the direction of that uh, stress that's being applied. And down at the bottom, we see some pictures of foliated metamorphic rocks in a typical sequence of increasing metamorphic grade. So the first rock shown in the top left of that picture is not metamorphic, that's a sedimentary shale. And the lower grade metamorphic rocks then are slate, increasingly higher grade phyllite, schist, and finally gneiss. As we classify metamorphic rocks, we classify them first of all as being foliated or non-foliated. So we just finished talking about foliation and metamorphic grade, and you can see in this chart that at the top of the chart we have low grade metamorphism, and that's slate. And over on the right side of the chart, it tells us that the parent rock of a slate is typically shale, mudstone, or siltstone. Higher pressures and temperatures might form a phyllite, which has the same parent rocks typically as the slate does, shale, mudstone, and siltstone. And what that tells us is that the phyllite would have experienced higher temperatures and pressures than the slate would have. Again, increasing the grade, we find schists. Now, schists come in many different uh, mineralogies, the most common probably being the mica schists, where you see those platy crystals of muscovite and or biotite that are all aligned parallel to one another. And finally, gneiss. Gneiss is typically seen as a rock that has alternating dark and light bands. So alternating bands of light minerals and dark minerals, again, formed in uh, probably a regional metamorphism situation where there was differential stress applied. Now at the bottom here, we see two of the non-foliated common rocks, and they are marble with the parent rock of limestone or dullstone, and quartzite with the parent rock of a quartz sandstone. And finally, we've been through this whole series of videos on igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks now, uh, and also talked about weathering. So I like this diagram of the rock cycle because it gives you, the viewer, an opportunity to pause the video and think about what's shown in each one of those stages. So at stage one, we're seeing the precursor of igneous rocks. At stage three, we have igneous rock. At stage five, we have some things happening that lead us to stage six, which is sedimentary rock. And then by stage eight, we have a metamorphic rock. So you go in and fill in the rest of those blanks, thinking about the rock cycle. Okay, so I think we can go in and review our learning targets. We've gone through the entire rock cycle. We've categorized igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rock types based on their origins, compositions, and textures in our last four videos. And I think we can analyze metamorphic rocks now for clues to their history. I think you're ready for that mastery check quiz. See you in class.